Hello, everybody. I hope this is going to be fairly brief, uh, but I want to talk to you about how to surrender. Because everybody talks to us about surrender. I mean, I've been talked to about surrender from the time I was about four years old, probably. Um, I was taught how to surrender to God, surrender to God, surrender to God. And um, the, but the problem was, was that I didn't know how. And then later, as I got into non-duality, I found out that there was, even though I kept hearing surrender, uh, one of the key to, things to, 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 that I found out about non-duality is that there was nobody here to do so. So how do you ask something that isn't to surrender? Well, let's take a look. So the first off, the deepest level of surrender is simply that there's no one who can surrender to God. Therefore, what really happens is that awakeness, that which is really prior to consciousness, but not other than consciousness, uh, just that consciousness is not other than awakeness, but it certainly is not the whole of awakeness. It doesn't hold a candle to awakeness, but it's still pretty cool, isn't it? So what it amounts to is that the only thing that can surrender, since there's no individual in any of these bodies, and there, if you believe that there is, hang on, I got something for you. But for right now, let's just pretend that we're that we're everybody's understanding that uh, that there is no one home. Therefore, there is no such thing as individual surrender. It feels like there is individual uh, surrender. I can remember it feeling like some, like I was doing that when, and I thought that I was a Fred who was doing that when that happened. But the truth is, it just happened. Uh, and it wasn't, there was no one there who could do it uh, because there was no one home. There's no Fred here. And you may think there's somebody in your body, but I know damn well, there's nobody in this one. So you can't convince me otherwise. I've been around this for nearly 40 years and I have discovered beyond the shadow of a doubt that there is no one home here. So what it amounts to there is that a whiteness has to surrender that whiteness is the only thing that can surrender. It's the only thing available to surrender. There's nothing other than a whiteness. And a whiteness has to surrender to consciousness. Now, consciousness is, as we said, is not other than a whiteness, but it's not a synonym for a whiteness. It is simply, it arises within awakeness from what the potentiality the vast potentiality the, the void is that from the void where there is no awareness that is nonetheless the mother of awareness so from that potentiality there rises a sense of awareness. Now, we're not saying that it's a sense of Fred's awareness or Bob's awareness or Carol's awareness. We're just noticing that there's a sense of awareness that arises. And when it does, that will be translated as, I know that I am. But I will not tell you that I am because that's not my experience. Well, it may be my experience, but I don't know. I don't know that I am. I can't really tell you with confidence the way everybody else can that I am. So if, there's, if I can't tell you I am, how in the hell am I going to tell you that I am going to surrender? What I can tell you is that there is a sense of being. In other words, there's a sense of life. And there's a sense of lifing. There is, there is the sense of experience. This is experiencing, this manifestation. This is experiencing. Who's doing it? Who, who, who's the only suspect we have? A whiteness. And what's a whiteness experiencing? We only have one suspect, which is a whiteness is experiencing a whiteness. Now, a whiteness can experience itself in two ways. It can experience itself consciously or unconsciously. And we've done videos on that, and I'm sure we'll do some more. But what we want to notice right now is that 
a whiteness has to surrender to relativity. See, this is it. And that's what we're going to go into in a minute. But I want you to see that a whiteness has to surrender to relativity because a whiteness is powerless. It's the only power in the universe, but it is powerless in the ways that, well, you know, well, let's just stick with powerless in the sense that I am a whiteness. This is all happening, but I don't control it. I don't manip If I want to consider myself a whiteness, I don't control it. I can't manipulate it. I can't stop it. I can't start it. I can't do anything other than witness it. And that's really my job is to witness this. But along with the witnessing, there can come, come a sense of that there's an I actually who is witnessing, and there's not. There's witnessing. We say it's a whiteness witnessing, but there's, it, there's just witnessing, really. A whiteness is not a being. A whiteness is... The, 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 I know nothing about being. People talk a lot about being, but the only thing I know is a verb called being and that there is a sense of being, which is another way of saying aliveness, experiencing life itself. Awakeness can't change relativity. And so when awakeness believes itself erroneously to be one of these things instead of the whole damn thing, then it, suffering will arise. And that's what happens. So suffering arises. And that's what then that's what drives people to non-duality. <clears throat> almost everybody. I can't say everybody because I don't know everybody, but almost everybody, and I do believe it's everybody I ever talked to that suffering drives you toward, you must know the truth because want to know the truth or want to know the truth so you can help others. Something like that. <coughs> That's just not authentic. It may be a nice idea, but it's not authentic. There's a drive to come to know the truth. And since there's only you, that drive is for you to come to know you consciously. You know yourself unconsciously as a universe. There is a universe. You are witnessing this universe, so to speak. It's not like there's you and a universe that you are not other than, the, the, and the universe is not other than you, but the universe does not equal you. And as, as I see it, you're not even in the universe. You're in, you know, you're in another, I, I, this is not actually right, but I'm just going to use this because it, it's the rightest thing I can think of. You're sort of a different dimension. You're not in a different dimension. You are a different dimension. So you are actually the unborn. This is the apparent world. They used to call it the world of appearances because that's what this is. It's a world of appearances. It's a world of appearances and there's nothing awakeness can do about it. Hence, the fact that when awakeness is erroneously experiencing itself to be a Fred or a Bob or a Carol, it will be me against the world. That's not the way it is at the at the birth. At birth, we don't have all that story. We don't believe all that crap. At birth, it's just <gasps> awe and wonder. There's no sense of separation. I work with psychiatrists and psychologists all over the world and promise you that there's no sense of separation at birth. <clears throat> so that first look has got to be oneness experiencing oneness. And notice that there is no resistance. And in the absence of resistance, there's no separation because there's not resistance to anything else because there's not anything else. Now, that brings us back to my earthly advice. And this will work for anybody out there because even if you have seen the truth, you can still fall back, fall back into believing that, that, that you're one of these. I mean, I, I make a living helping people to 
not only see this for the first time, but I make a living out of helping people see it right now. And why is that? Because they're in the same boat that I was in for three years, which is that awakening occurred and there was a whiteness. There certainly was, but there was no real clarity. And I just stumbled here and bumbled there. And I went up every, uh, you know, every wrong alley that I could. I just turned up into every cul-de-sac that I could find. I went into no answers. So I want you to hear, I'm going to give you some advice on how you, no matter what you think you are, can surrender. So first of all, let's notice. I look around this room, and actually, if I tell myself the truth, I don't look around this room. There is looking, there is gazing at this. In the absence of language, there is no room. And, you know, if we're going to go along with the oneness thing a bit, I mean, do you think a oneness really needs language? Who would it talk to? Right. The only thing that oneness can talk to is itself, which is exactly what's happening here. This is oneness talking to oneness. This is oneness talking to oneness. Can't be anything else. See, there's nothing outside of oneness. There's nothing other than oneness. So as a baby, there was no resistance to what is. There was no recognition of what is because the brain had not yet formulated meaning for whatever the hell this is. But see, I, the truth is, it's, I didn't know what this was when it was a baby, but I didn't think of it as being other than myself. And amazingly enough, at been for 50 years, I did think it was other than myself. And then just over 50 years later, I can't well, actually about 50 years from the time I saw that it was, uh, that it was that when I thought that um, this was not me, I came to see that, oh, there's, there's only me, which means that this cannot be other than me. So given the fact that I, there's nothing other than me, what do you think I've been looking at my entire life? And you might want to check this out and see if it's not your situation too. Because what I came to discover when I really got this idea that there's just one thing and this is it was, uh, you know, I came to recognize that I had been looking at myself the entire time. I had been looking at myself. And when I say I had been looking at myself, what am I talking about? Oneness had been looking at oneness. There ain't, at least within the world of, within the world of relativity, there is nothing other than oneness. So, Within the experience of relativity, oneness is experiencing oneness, and that's that. It can't experience anything outside or other than. It can only experience itself. And it can experience itself consciously in which, as this, over here, there's, 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 just, there's, there's, I can't even say that there's clarity on that because there just, there is the seeing that, that this is it and this is not other than me. And uh, so I've been looking at myself all along. Now, I don't actually need to understand that I've been looking at myself so much unless I just want to reduce some suffering. But if I want to reduce some suffering, I could notice that I've been looking at myself the entire time and that the entire time that I've been looking at oneness, I have not been recognizing that I am the oneness that I'm looking at. See, I always left this out of the picture, didn't you? Yeah, I was looking for oneness. People, people, you know, they, they, they send me money and then they tell me, you know, I got to merge with oneness. That's okay. I'm glad to, glad to help you. I understand when that confused me too, but doesn't confuse me anymore because I can see very clearly that there's nothing outside 
of oneness that could ever possibly merge with oneness because oneness does not have any connections to anything else because there isn't anything else. So when it comes to surrender, what I want to direct your attention to, toward is this. This experience, this arising, you think I'm looking at one arising and you're looking at another? There's only the one arising, hence the title oneness. So oneness is looking at oneness. And at the moment, from over here, so to speak, as if there was a here and a there, and there's not, but within relativity there is. And within relativity, from this so-called position, I can see that there's only this. And you haven't heard that, but about a thousand times that there's only this. You've heard me say it, I have nauseam. But it's not until you've heard me that you should direct your attention away from that. You need to have heard me. And what I mean when I say there's, that, that there, there's only this, the secret to that, what I really mean, what I really, really, really mean is that there's only this. See, there's only this <clears throat> as it is. This as it is. I read yesterday that Margaret Fuller, who ran with uh, the 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 with Thoreau and and and, and uh, Emerson and the rest of the transcendentalists, that she her favorite saying was that she used to say a lot was, "I accept the universe." And and uh, the, and, and somebody reported that to an enlightened fellow in England, and he said, "Gad, I hope so," <laughs> because she can't not. So you don't have to you don't have to agree to accept what is. It, you're already accepting what is because here it is. You cannot stop what is. You cannot remake what is because whatever whatever happens to what is will it will always remain what is, and it has always been what is. There's only what is there's only one is one what is as it is which means precisely like this and this is what you do not want to surrender to because you believe that in that in the surrender that there is a fearful thing that will happen and the fearful thing you think will happen and what happened for me at least was I came to see that there was no Fred. Now I can tell you that it was a time when the idea of seeing that there was no Fred was scary. But once I came to see that there was no Fred, I recognized that the only thing that had, had ever been afraid of seeing that there was no Fred was Fred. In other words, was a make-believe character. It was a position that had no, nowhere to stand. It was a reference to something that doesn't exist. It was a false reference. There's this as it is. So what can I expect from this as it is? This. That's what I can expect. But that's not what I expect. We don't expect this. We expect the better than this. That's what we want. We want the other than this. We have our expectations built around our preferences instead of this, yeah? So it's really very simple. This is it, as it is. Whatever you are, you're not in control of this. Nobody is in control of this. There is no driver to this lifing bus. There's just the lifing bus. And there's no separate one on it. And there's no one for it to hit other than itself going down the road. There's just 
this without any adjustment. It's not, well, that's not, because our thinking goes like this, well, I could accept this if only, and that if only is what is the, that is the wellspring of your suffering. What if you were to turn your, <clears throat> what if you were to turn your suffering around or your, your, your expectations around? What if you were to, to just drop expectations? Who is it that would drop expectations? Whose expectations are they? In some way, shape, or form, there's, you know, there's only awakeness, but there's the awakeness beliefs that it's one of these. And when it does, it suffers like hell because this can never be right for a me. Never, ever, ever, not one million years will this ever be right for me. Because I don't really know as a me how things should be, but I do they know that they shouldn't be like this for me. There's only 8 billion others on this planet alone that would agree with you. If you want to stop suffering, stop lying to yourself. Lower your expectations to meet the reality of experiencing. I don't have to want what I get, but I'm going to suffer if I don't. We're trying to manipulate the world and instead, just let yourself disappear into this. Where are you in, in relationship to this? Where are you? There's a sense of a false center, but there's no center here. There's a sense that there's a center of this body and that must be where Fred is. That was the sense I had. I believed it for years, decades, but it's been seen to not be true. Acceptance of this as it is, that surrender. And there's no reason not to accept it because it already is. So your opinion doesn't change it. Whether you like this or not doesn't change it. If you think you're an individual, well, it doesn't matter what you think you are, it doesn't change it. But awakeness actually has no preferences because this is fine as it is for awakeness, but that'll never be that way for an individual, which points out that your number one job in all of spirituality is to come to see through the so-called one. I had a, uh, I had a, a pulmonary test today and a woman asked me, uh, what do you do? And I tried to get around telling her what I did because nobody really wants to hear it, but she Fleshed it, and she got it out, and I want to know. And so I told her, and um, she said, "Yeah, people really have a lot of trouble staying in the now." She said, "Because there really is no separate now." And I went, "Wow, <laughs> that was astute. This is coming out of a pulmonary nurse, right?" And in the hospital, with you know, I'm doing all kinds of breathing tests, and uh, we had a chat about it. And we came to see that in the absence of resistance, the, the way I put it to her was the sense of singularity disappears. The sense of a me. So if you want to surrender, it's a, it's a gradual process. It, it, there may feel like a, there's a, a moment's process and that'll just be awakeness given up on trying to amend what it can't influence. The only way you can influence things is by looking at them, by witnessing them non-judgmentally. And that may lead to change, but it's not something you can directly change because there's no you over there. That's for another video. Thank you. See you later. I love you.